Hello, it's Steve, and this is our sustainable journey. Today, I am going to walk you through um, the process of looking for morals, what to look for, how to find them, where to find them, and what to do once you find them to properly prepare, cook them, eat them, and the best recipe that um, we've ever had. So I'll show you the whole process. Stay tuned. Um, if you like the video, click the thumbs up. If you have questions, comment below. If you like the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you watching our videos um, about stuff here on the homestead or about the worms and the worm farm that we have going on with all of our food scraps. We're looking for morals and basically what you're looking for are trees that are dying or dead but that haven't lost all their bark that was the advice that we were given um like elm trees i think is is one of the main ones that they grow near um and then when you spot them they look like that let's see that's a pretty decent sized one and then it's ground there so, and when you find one, odds are good that there are more. Um, yeah, so if you look, there's one over here. So we'll grab this guy. And we'll just kind of stand in one spot. Oh, there's another one right over there. And there's one right there. Okay, so we'll grab this guy. And then we'll grab this guy. Here. So there you go. Just a few minutes. We've got four. Um, and this is probably, I don't know, six to eight ounces worth. Um, you want probably a half pound to a pound, depending on how large your family is. We've got a family of five, and so um, we want at least a pound. So I'm going to keep looking in this spot, and we'll see if we can find some more from just where we're standing. But that's a pretty good haul from... Just standing in one spot. Now, other things to keep in mind. You're in the woods, right? So we are surrounded. See, there's the barn, there's the house, or I can see them, I don't know if you can on the camera. Um, but we're basically 360 degrees of woods. And so you wanna make sure you're wearing long pants because of bugs and other pests um, and you want to have long sleeves because you're kind of reaching in um, and trudging through um, yeah and so you want to make sure that you're protected from the scratches of the underbrush and things like that so I am going to keep looking and we'll see how many we can come up with Okay, I just <laughs> walked to the other side of a tree and spotted another one. I don't know if you can see. But once you find one, it's much easier to find more because your eyes just get um, tuned to what you're looking for. So it gets a little bit easier the more you find. So we're just going to keep... Again, I've moved... 10 feet and we've already found another one all right some other advice when looking for morals is to know where you are so there's apps out there like onyx um which i use for hunting but it's also good for figuring out exactly where you are and whether you're you're on land you're supposed to be on or land you're not supposed to be on so we have these red pipes buried in the ground um, that tell us exactly where the corner of our property is and so it goes that way and that way so i'm actually outside of our property right now um 
but you want to know where you where you are and you want others to know where you are so anytime we're out in the woods there's always two of us or at least if there's one there's another one at the house that knows where we are at all times um because it's 10 acres and it's probably half wooded so you know you can see again 300 and 60 degrees of woods. Um, it's easy to get lost and make sure you always have permission of the people that you're hunting for morals uh, on their land. Um, around here, people will post signs of no mushroom hunting, which is kind of hilarious. But um, another tip is to go and look for them after a rain. Um, it needs the ground needs to be moist um, and so you want to go after a rain not like immediately after rain because it's going to be just a big muddy mess but you know give it a day or so after rain um, yeah so we're going to continue looking so i just want to show why it's important to have some people know where you are so we are on one of my favorite parts of our property um, and that is why. So I am just about six feet tall. That tree was probably, I don't know, four or five feet in diameter. And it fell and knocked down all those other trees. And then some over there. I'm assuming that happened last year during the derecho. Um, but yeah, nature's kind of scary. Um, and so if you, there are certain areas where if you look up, you'll see many trees hanging above you, um, that are suspended and on their last leg, essentially ready to fall down on you. Um, so try not to go when it, uh, when it's windy. Okay. So... We have the ones we found today. Um, I want to show you a few characteristics, right? So the way they're shaped is one way to identify them. Um, the way they feel is kind of, I don't know, wishy. Um, they're also hollow on the inside. I don't, uh, cut off the bottom of these, but they're, they're completely hollow on the inside and they're shaped like an elf hat, essentially. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, you want to be careful. There are false morals out there um, that look somewhat similar, I guess, but are not actual morals. Um, if you're not sure, don't pick them. Um, because they do have toxins in them, so you want to make sure that you, you got the right one and you're not just going to, you know, die because you grabbed the wrong mushroom. That'd be a silly thing to do. Um, so we'll get these cleaned up, I'll get cleaned up, and we'll go in and show you how we prepare them. Okay, so in order to rinse them and get them clean, because, you know, they were out in the middle of the woods, and you don't want to just pick them and eat them, what you do is you put them in a colander, and you shake them. Gently. Very, very gently. And all the little bugs that were inside fall out into your sink. And I don't know if you can see any of them moving. I shook them a little bit earlier, so the... Ooh, there we go. Great. It's all right, a little bit of protein didn't hurt anybody. Okay, so then you take them over to a pot of water and kind of make them swim a little bit. Just kind of shake them around a little bit to, to get any of the other solid dirts and because they're morals they're hollow on the inside so you can scoop out the inside or not scoop out the inside but fill the inside with water and shake them out a little bit until you don't see any more dirt and that means that they're clean so then we can set them aside because you probably don't want to put them back in the tray that you just to get oh, clean. Got it. Okay, so then after you've shaken them out in the water as best you possibly can, 
We're going to put them on the cutting board and we're going to cut them. You're supposed to cut them in half. Um, I'm told that the bigger ones you can cut in more than half, but usually with the smaller ones, you don't have to cut them into more than just half is good enough. And then you're going to kind of shake out shake the out extra up. And you can notice there's still dirt in the crevices. Still dirt. Because, you know, they were outside and outside is dirty. So and they have a lot of crevices. They have a ton of crevices. That's pretty much all they are is crevice. So shaky, shaky in the water. Rinse them out as best you can. Nah, that's probably good enough. A little dirt never killed anybody. Yeah, it's true. We, we do a lot with worm poop, so honestly, the dirt in a moral is kind of nothing. All right, so then we're going to dry them off. And next step is to cut them in half. So then, cut them in half. I don't know, we always called this hot dog when I was a kid. There's hot dog and hamburger. And then, again, rinse them. Got a couple friends in there. Yeah, there's... Protein. A little bit of protein. We're gonna dry them again. We're kind of sticklers for not eating as much dirt as possible. I don't know, kind of a habit of mine. Um, I wonder how they clean them commercially. Do they even sell them commercially? I don't know. Interesting. All right, so then we're gonna... Clean the rest of them, cut the them rest, up. Cut them up, and then we'll move on to step two. Other things we've been told, other ways of rinsing them is using salt water. I don't know if that adds to the flavor Adds it, to the, the grit, salt water the, helps get rid of the bugs the and stuff. the grossness. Apparently bugs don't like salt water. There must not be any bugs in the ocean. Interesting. So we're also going to show you the salt water method. So what you do here is you just let them soak in salt water. And the amount of salt you use is what? A teaspoon? Teaspoon per quart, I believe. Teaspoon per quart. So, not a lot. And you soak them for four minutes, and then you can pull them out, pat them dry, and then on to step two, or I don't know, seven, whatever we're up to. Okay, so now we've cut them all in half, soaked them, and we are patting them dry. This is what's left, this nasty, nasty stuff that was inside of them. Um, and then what we're using is breadcrumbs and eggs. So basically give them an egg wash, soak them in the egg, um, and then dip them in the breadcrumbs. Um, and then you wanna cook them for roughly six minutes, really, really, really hot in a lot of butter um this is not a healthy recipe um but it's supposed to be a delicious recipe um and you want to make sure that they are fully cooked raw morals can send you to the hospital so be very careful when you're doing this um to make sure that they are fully cooked so we're gonna crack some eggs beat them up and then add the batter and then fry them up. So a few of these are a little bit big. And so, you know, they have pretty decent sized hands. These are kind of huge. So we're gonna cut them in half again. So they're a little bit more bite size ish. Let them cook a little bit quicker to make sure they do fully cook instead of yeah. partially. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one, dip it in our little egg doodad, dip it in our breading, there we go, tomorrow, 
dip it in the egg wash. Dip it in the breadcrumbs. And we'll set it aside. And then stuff is going to start frying them up. And we do that so that if we do get sick, we can blame it on her, and it's not my fault. Strategic. I need the tongs. Here's this. So then we put them in a big vat of butter. Fry them up. We'll give those a few minutes. And then, um... We'll let them cool down and we'll give them a try. All right, so while they're cooking, it looks kind of like that. There's the ones that are waiting. So it's just a matter of waiting until they're fully cooked. Okay, so we have cooked the morals. Uh, we ended up using flour for some of them because we ran out of breadcrumbs. Bread crumbs. <laughs> so the breadcrumbs look like that. Yeah, the breadcrumbs look amazing. The flour ones didn't... Don't look as good. Don't look as good. But we'll see. So we'll try them. Alright. They smell... They smell amazing. So, everybody... We gotta try one as a family. Okay, take one. Just take one. I'll take a, I'll take a big one. I'll take a big one. All right. That's pretty good. Agreed. <laughs> Daphne's going back for more. You All right. So there you have it. Moral mushrooms. Free food from the forest. And pretty good too. There you go, buddy.